over-the-air updates, or OTA, allows you to upload code to your electronics project without having to have it physically connected to a computer. You can like cut your cables. In this lesson, we'll walk through wirelessly uploading sketches to your ESP32 board using the Arduino OTA library. Now, this video is gonna focus on just the minimum stuff you need to actually get over-the-air updates to work. In fact, it's like two functions from the library that will be abused to make this work. But let's go ahead and dive in. All right, before we get to the code, I just wanna talk about code flow real quick. It's really straightforward. This should only take us a moment, but so think about, hey, let me zoom in a little bit. Think a little bit about an Arduino sketch, right? We've got setup and we've got loop. Setup happens once, loop happens over and over and over. So inside setup, there's two minimum things you need to do to make this OTA stuff work. The first is you gotta connect to a Wi-Fi. So you'll connect to a Wi-Fi network, and the next thing you need to do is begin the Arduino OTA. And this is literally a function call. So this is one line of code right here. So this is super easy. Then inside the loop, there's a single function that you need to include that will handle the OTA updates. And then other than that, you just write your own code. So you know the loop goes over and over and over. And every time through the loop, you'll be checking to see if there's an update. And if there is, it will get handled by this single function call. So, okay, pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and code this up. All right, here I am in the Arduino IDE in a blank sketch. And what I'm gonna do first is just write a couple comments just to kind of line up what we need to do here. Okay, so we need to include some libraries. We need to set up our Wi-Fi credentials, you know, like what is the name of the network and what's the password. And then we need to connect to Wi-Fi. We need to begin OTA. And then in the loop, we need to make sure we handle OTA. And then below that is where we put our own code. So let me go ahead and write in some of these functions here and we'll talk about it. All right, so you can see not a lot of code here. Let's go ahead and talk about this. So including libraries, you're gonna need two libraries as a minimum. First, you'll need the Arduino OTA library. So that's what's gonna enable these over the air updates. And then you'll need the Wi-Fi.h library, and that's just for connecting your ESP32 to Wi-Fi. Then, you know, you set up your Wi-Fi credentials. This is just your network name and your password. Um, obviously, you'll change these to uh, your own. And that's kind of like above setup, right? So not much there. In setup, first we need to connect to Wi-Fi. So I'm just using the begin function from the Wi-Fi library. You pass in that SSID and password and it's gonna connect and it defaults to Wi-Fi station mode, which basically says, hey, it makes this device a thing that can connect to a Wi-Fi network. And what this allows ESP32 to do is connect to the Wi-Fi network that you specify. But that might take a moment. And so what you wanna do is kind of wait until that's happened. So we just kind of hold here until it's connected. And after that, we use our first function from the Arduino OTA library, which is the begin function. And all that does, it doesn't take any parameters. It's just going to get the OTA set up. And that is going to happen in setup. Once we get into the loop, we have the other Arduino OTA function handle that we call. So just Arduino OTA dot handle. And this is what we'll be checking for updates and handling that update inside the loop. So any code you have is just gonna go right below here. And this is it. Hopefully you can see that this is really the scraped down absolute minimum code that you need to make this over the air update work. Like you could do some other stuff in here, you know, like maybe uh, if it doesn't connect, you restart the Wi-Fi and you know, maybe you print some stuff off. And there are some other functions in the Arduino OTA library that you can take advantage of, but I really wanted to boil this down to the absolute minimum code you needed, and that's what this is. If you wanna check out a sketch that has some more of these functions demonstrated, then go up to File, Examples, Arduino OTA, Basic OTA, 
And this will demonstrate kind of some more stuff that you can do, some other functions in here. But you can see it's got a bit more going on. And again, I just wanted to get it down to the bare minimum. So we're just including libraries, setting up Wi-Fi credentials, connecting to Wi-Fi, Arduino OTA begin, and then in the loop, Arduino OTA handle. So now let's go ahead and upload this. And just so you know, I have a ESP32 Vroom DA module. Any ESP32 should work fine with this. And I have it physically connected to the computer. So the first time you load this OTA code, you'll have to have your ESP32 board physically connected to your computer to upload the code. After that, you'll be able to do it wirelessly. Now there's one really, really, really super important point I wanna make here. And it's that every time you upload new code to your board, it needs to include at least this minimum OTA code. So like, let's say I wirelessly uploaded some code to this board and it just had like the blink sketch and there was no reference to OTA. Well, that blink sketch is going to replace this sketch. And so once you've done that, you will have overwritten your OTA capability and you're not gonna be able to wirelessly update your board again. So every time you upload code, you need to include the OTA functionality. It's not like Arduino OTA is like setting up the board forever for these OTA updates. It's literally the code itself is what's making this work. It's not some process running in the background or, or something like that. So just to say it one more time, every time you upload code to the board, if you wanna keep doing over the air updates, you need to include that OTA code. So I've just uploaded this code to my ESP32. And what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and unplug it. And then I've got a little backup battery power supply here. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. So this should power this up. Okay, there it is. So it's back on again. This is just a little backup battery power supply thing, nothing special. Okay, so now my ESP32 is powered and it is not connected to my computer. No physical connection there. And now what I can do is I go to the board and port selection in the Arduino IDE and look at what shows up. There's a network port that now shows up and it says unknown. You can actually name that. Again, that's something you can do if you check out that other basic OTA sketch. There's a way to name it so it's a little more um, clear to identify. But And now you would just select this port and it's th that easy. It's gonna ask me what it is. I'll set the board and then I hit OK. And now I can literally just hit upload and I can upload new code to this board. That's pretty sweet. Now, one quick note, if I try to open up the serial monitor, you'll get a little uh, error that says, hey, this, there's no serial monitor for the network protocol. So as far as I understand, you're not gonna be able to use that, but still, hey, this is pretty sweet. Now, another way to select the port is if you just come up to tools, port, and under the port, it will list the network ports. And that's the same for Arduino IDE 1.0. Um, you can just look right under the network ports just like this. So this works perfectly fine in Arduino 1.0. I will note, if you are using Arduino IDE 1, what I found is that I had to close my Arduino IDE and open it again in order for the network port to show up. Maybe that was just my setup, but anyway. Okay, so now we're connected, but chances are you probably think I'm totally lying, like I'm just making this stuff up. So I'm gonna prove it to you right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little blink code down in uh, the loop and then I'm gonna upload it and I have a LED circuit set up here. So, so let's see if this is just make believe or not. Kind of feels like it. Okay, so I just added some blink code, you know, set the pin mode pin number, and then just a digital rate. Pretty uh, basic stuff here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click upload. Well, now it's asking me for my password. Whoa, what's that? Well, that is the network password. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here. And then I click upload. Now it's worth noting that the computer that you're working on, you know, to wirelessly upload this code, it needs to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your ESP32 is connected to. So my computer, which is not connected to my ESP32 right now, is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as the ESP32. That's kind of cool. I mean, that looks like, I don't know, Tronish or something. 
Oh, do you see that? See, I'm not a liar. It's still... That was not smoke and mirrors. That just happened. That is so cool. All right. Now, uh, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know. I was like, man, that's too slow. And I don't know, maybe this is like, who knows? Maybe it's in some weird place. I just can't reach it easily, but I want to be able to like update that code. What do I have to do? Well, I need to make sure to include the Arduino OTA code because if I don't do that, I'm going to not be able to do it uh, anymore. Let me, uh, let me change this. Just let's speed this up to... Uh, Tenth of a second. Let me upload that again. Let's see how this works. All right, now I'm going to upload again, but it's not showing my network port. What did I do? I didn't change anything. It should be showing a network port. So uh, to troubleshoot this, I'm just going to close the IDE and open it again. Just to be clear, when I open this up, I'm not seeing the network port shown. So let me let me just try closing it and reopening it. All right, and that did it. Now it's showing back up. I promise you I didn't touch the ESP32 to reset it or anything like that. I just had to restart the Arduino IDE. I'm not sure why that is. Who knows? Um, but I'm going to go ahead and select it. I'll go ahead and upload this code. Got to enter the password again. Okay, I was able to upload again. I guess I did have to restart the Arduino IDE. I haven't had to do that in the past, at least in Arduino IDE 2. Maybe that's just something that happens once in a while, a good troubleshooting step. All right, well, I'm glad you've got this Arduino OTA code down. The next video you should watch is this video right here. It is an Arduino masterclass, and it will get you up and running with Arduino in no time, so you understand all this background information like setup and loop and variables and control structures, all that stuff, you're gonna get it action-packed this video right here.